hello everyone. Uh, the topic of my presentation today is an all-silicon double differential MEMS accelerometer with improved thermal stability. Uh, first one, introduction. Uh, MEMS accelerometers are used in a wide range of applications, and uh, they can be classified in several different categories, including consumer grade, tactical grade, and navigation grade. Uh, consumer grade MEMS accelerometers are now using uh, CMOS plus MEMS technologies, and uh, they are widely used in consumer electronics such as our smartphones and uh, automotives. Uh, tactical grade MEMS accelerometers are preferring to use a hybrid assembly of two separated uh, dies. And they are used in uh, applications, some high end applications such as the uh, earthquake prediction, um, structure health monitoring, and uh, short range navigations. However, the highest performance navigation grade accelerometers are still dominated by. Macro electromechanical accelerometers, such as the coarse pendular accelerometer supplied by Honeywell. Here we list a uh, uh, detailed performance comparison between different grade accelerometers. As we can see that when these accelerometers has better performance, their selling price could be increased by more than 10 times. And the, here we compare a the performance between uh, MEMS accelerometers and the uh, coarse pendulous accelerometers. And we can find that the MEMS accelerometers could have a better scale factor temperature coefficient, but worse BIOS temperature coefficient and long term BIOS stability. So the main challenge really, uh, relies on the BIOS temperature coefficient and the long term BIOS stability. According to our previous research result, temperature drift of accelerometers BIOS is mainly contributed by structure asymmetry and uh, coefficient of thermal expansion mismatch between single crest silicon and the package materials. The structure asymmetry could be ensured by an all silicon sandwich structure design, but the thermal expansion mismatches. Mm, still, still uh, lead to solve, and there are many different report approach to improve thermal stability, such as the uh, soft die attach, double sided well bound mounting, and the stress uh, stress isolation supporting frame. Thermal stability improved by double differential configuration is a new implemented technology. Here we give two examples to uh, show how it works. Normally we only use, uh, uh, here the first example is a surface micro machined dual layer Z axis accelerometers uh, reported in IEEE MAMS conference. It is using a seesaw structure. Normally we only use two density capacitors to sense the accelerations, but in this case it is using four different sensing capacitance. And uh, when the temperature is changing, the left part and the right part of the scissor structure will have a similar thermal deflation. Thus, in principle, this kind of accelerometers could uh, completely eliminate the thermal deformation, the thermal drift caused by package effect. And the right example is given by Professor Xiao Dingbang. Uh, they are using a glass silicon glass sandwich structure to construct a Z axis accelerometer. It is also using four different uh, sensing capacitance, but with two thesaur structure. Uh, in this presentation, a lower approach using slanted beam sandwich structure. Is proposed to extend the prior art of double differential configuration. Then I explained how it works. This is a typical sandwich type capacitive accelerometers. Um, here we have a proof mass, a, sp a supporting spring, 
and uh, two sensing capacitance. When an acceleration in a vertical outer plane direction is applied, the proof of mass will move upward or downward. Thus, this it will uh, produce a singular proportional to the applied uh, acceleration. Its working principle is simple. This slanted beam MEMS accelerometer is also using this kind of sandwich type structure. But the main difference is that its blunting spring is parallel to the 111 plane of a silicon wafer, which is determined by the single crystal, a single silicon crystal orientations. For a typical cantilever beam mass structure, it is only sensitive to the Z axis accelerations. But for this slanted beam mass structure, it is sensitive to both y and z axis accelerations then we combine two of these kind of slanted beam transferring structures and we connected there and we connected the top layer of the first sensory structure to the bottom layer of this the right side sensory structure in this way we can also build a double differential configuration when an acceleration in excess is applied, both of these two sensory elements will mix low movement. And uh, in y direction, the sensory element A and B will move in the uh, opposite direction. Thus, their output singular will be doubled. And uh, when the z axis acceleration is applied, both sensory element A and B will move in the same direction. So in, in these conditions, this slanted beam accelerometer is, is only sensitive to accelerations in y direction. Simulation and the structure analysis. We have used the fitted element modeling to analyze the performance of one slanted beam sensory element. The result shows that it has a very good linearity over a sensitive range up to 50 G, and the sensitivities in two orthogonal directions only have a slight difference. And here, this is the thermal deformation analysis. We can see that both of these two sensory elements will have symmetric deformation. Then these double differential calculations will decline this influence and keep the output singulars invariant under ideal condition. The next is device fabrication. Uh, firstly, we thermally oxidize the silicon wafer and pattern the oxide. Then we deposit the silicon nitride layers and pattern the slanted beam mass structure. We are using an anisotropic, anisotropic silicon wet edge uh, to form the beam and uh, mass structure, then we remove the silicon nitride layer. Finally, we bond the three wafers together by using high temperature fusion bonding. The first and uh, middle, the top and the middle wafers are using silicon wafers, and the bottom wafers is an SOI wafer. Uh, during the fabrication, one of the main challenge is the silicon wet edge. Because we want to have a symmetric structure, uh, we need to etch the proof mass from both two sides. So in this case, the proof mass will, sorry, the, the slanted beam will need much longer edge time than the proof mass. So uh, we need to protect the corners of the proof mass during this long time over edge. Uh, after several tries, a specific fabrication technique was developed for this task by using uh, additive modified EMH edge combined with a composition structure design. Here we show the fabrication results. Uh, this is the front side SEM images uh, and the back side SEM 
I see an image of a slanted beam sensing structure. And uh, then we show uh, SCM images of a double differential micro accelerometers. We have packaged the device, uh, including MEMS die and ASIC die. The measurement result. Uh, this double differential MEMS accelerometers was measured first uh, for its uh, BIOS drift. Uh, it demonstrates a short-time BIOS stability of 3.84 mini G. And uh, we have also used the, uh, uh, we have also measured its centrifuge uh, response. It shows that it has a scale factor of nearly 40 meter volts to be in one y axis directions and uh, a low course access sensitivity in the access direction. Then this is the thermal response. We can find that in the BIOS temperature coefficient will be reduced from 1 to 0 0.37. And uh, its scale factor temperature coefficients uh, remains almost the same. And uh, it is reasonable from the simulation prediction. And summary. Double differential configuration is a newly implemented technique in MEMS adaptive accelerometers. And uh, lower double differential accelerometers constitu constituted by two slanted beam sensory elements was designed, modeled, and, uh, fabrication, and, and fabricated in this work. Uh, the measurement result shows that the BIOS temperature coefficient could be reduced by a factor of 2.7. And there is course access sensitivity is lower than uh, 0.6%. Uh, that's what, thanks.